All right, I just got a shipment of idea cards, postcards. I call them idea cards from Vista Print. That's just a company that I've come to use over the years, and uh, I'm real familiar with their formats and whatnot. I should probably try some other companies one of these days, but I'm just going with Vista Print. This is a I can probably save this little piece of paper. I have a feeling this is what paper was came with this. All right, I know where this paper came from in my last lesson. Okay, so anyways, idea cards are just, you know, example cards showing um, the various cards that I've done in these video lessons over time. Sometimes I order stuff that I've, you know, haven't ordered in 10 years. Sometimes they're the most recent ones. This is a really great um, reproduction here. Uh, it's not overexposed and whatnot. And then we have all of our information on the back. These um, cards go out with orders that have been received so that people can have um, not only access to all of the online material, but um, you know, it's just kind of nice to have something in hand once in a while. I don't know if you're like me, but it's kind of nice to be able to hold something uh, in your hand and see it. I'm just that way. You know, it's like the difference between like a Kindle, ultimate convenience, and, uh, you know, kind of a nice book, even a nice used book. All right, this one was using the Moonlight um, Duo pads and uh, looks pretty good in terms of reproduction. One of these days I should order some of these um, idea cards in uh, matte. They're more expensive that way for some reason. Maybe it's just because uh, they get a lot more glossy orders at uh, Vistapin and they gang print, you know, I'm sure. Probably on master sheets of, you know, 50 of these, you know, size cards or something like that. All right, let's take a look here. <clears throat> and Abiding Embers. That's kind of a, a reproduction of a scene that I did years and years and years ago, but um, I don't think I ever had it made into a uh, an idea card, but um, kind of an unconventional color scheme, but, you know, it's I don't know. I mean, under certain circumstances, maybe something would look like that. It's kind of more, kind of theatrical or something like that. Um, kind of more dreamlike in terms of the color scheme. But um, this one's a good example of using values and a certain type of color scheme. I don't know. It'd be something like this. I don't know. It wouldn't be actually be those exact colors. Maybe this one's a little bit too hot pink, but. This one is probably going through something like this in terms of a color scheme right here. Do you see this right here where you have kind of the background tones in? Yeah, it was more of a pur uh, purple violet tone, but it's something like this. And the middle ground would be this color. And then this is dark brown. It's not black right here. And then the very foreground would be a black color. color. Uh, scheme up here, you know, the things that are the, the closest to us. It might be a versifying black, but see that you, when you have a kind of like a, a color scheme like this, and also a value scheme going from light, middle, dark, and then black in the foreground, you could lay out your imagery that way with the, the most distant ones being the lightest, the middle ones being the, you know, the midtones, darker, closer, closest like that, okay? So it kind of goes like that, you know, in terms of uh, distance, all right? And I have videos um, on that very uh, strategy um, when using your color scheme. So in my classes, I always had people kind of line up their pads um, with whatever color scheme they were going with, going from light to dark just so that they would know what color to start off with in their coloring process. But also, when I got into my Stampscaping 201 class, which was right after the 101 class, and oftentimes people took both classes. Okay, we got the same thing right here. <clears throat> Vistaprint is one of those places that, I don't know, they, they make it so 
you <laughs> you kind of have to upscale or whatever your um, your order because the first I don't know like 250 cards or something like I don't know let's say it's $25 or something like that and then you know if you double the order I don't know it's like an extra like $10 or something like that and then if you order another grouping it's only $5 more and you double that so I don't know you keep kind of upscaling this is by Anna Karen uh, Evelston son sorry Anna Karen <laughs> great postcard uh, um, bookmark right here. I really love her formatting and, and things like that. Uh, really cool pieces. She did that back in 2014. Boy. Time flies <clears throat> when you're having fun. She really incorporated the uh, scenic sentiment um, stamps in really well. Okay, this is the same one here. These gigantic blocks of these. <clears throat> I don't know if I should save. I should save this piece of paper. I don't know what it is. I thought it was cardstock, and I thought it could be some of that same, you know, paper that's used for the printing, but these ones aren't glossy, so I don't know what they are. I kind of acted a little bit weird in terms of my um, color applications. <clears throat> when I was uh, doing my uh, lesson yesterday, um, just in terms of, I was, I found it fascinating how the ink really didn't dry as fast as it did, and maybe it's because whatever, um, whatever kind of, uh, I don't know, surface is on, you know, this kind of uh, paper. Maybe it's just some, maybe it's just chipboard, or, I don't know, is it chipboard? Is that what they call it? Okay, this one right here, recent one, Reason and Faith. I'm playing around with these different things, I'm going a little bit more white pigment ink dominant these days, so I'm leaving my skies a little bit lighter, which I found it was really helpful when I was stamping out my um, scenic sentiment um, word stamps. It really stands out, but when you leave your sky you know, quite a bit lighter, um, it really gives you an good opportunity for a lot of white pigment ink throughout the pieces. It's all, you almost can't, can do no wrong with white pigment ink because it, it just kind of harmonizes with the entire scene so much easier, of course, and it makes sense, you know, if the scene is kind of closer to white, then white pigment ink being applied in there would, um, you know, it just merges and harmonizes with the uh, surroundings so much easier because there's so much more of it inherently in just what you didn't tone out. All right, let's take a look. This is one of my favorite kind of recent pieces, I guess. I don't know. I don't uh, think about my pieces too much, you know, too much longer after I stamp them because I'm already on the next piece, but I really like this kind of this Aurora Borealis type of thing and uh, my take on it for like Christmas, you know, a Christmas card, you know, with the, uh, the red and the green there in terms of those traditional colors like that, but I brought some of that color scheme down here too, you know, just so that the ground harmonizes with the, uh, the sky a little bit more. And then, I don't know, if there was such bright colors of this snow down here, it would be really reflective of that light anyway. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Some of, the, one of these might be just repeats here. Okay, this is Abiding Embers here. There might be one other one that's unique. I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four. Eh. Let me see, one, two, yeah, these might all be duplicates right here. Okay, this one's this one. I don't have every one of my uh, scenes made into idea cards, but maybe quite a bit. Okay, here's another one. 
unique one. I think this is the last one. Okay, this was a piece that um, I really... I had a fun time with. It, it's not, it's not the, ones that, the pieces that I have a lot of fun with, or that kind of last with me a little bit longer than other pieces where I just kind of move on, are the ones where I try something completely different. I don't know. They say that we're only really happy when we're growing or whatever, you know, just in terms of learning new things. And this one was one where... Um, I was playing around with the, the combination of pigment ink as well as just straight dye based inks. And uh, these are the, all these impressions, not all of them, the white ones are a combination of dye based ink and pigment inks. Actually, physically, actually, it was the stamp right here, added on the stamp itself. So, what I did was uh, I applied the black on here, then I applied with a cotton ball some pigment ink over the top of it. And my thinking is, okay, so I had this kind of aurora borealis type of thing, kind of where it's kind of lighter than the bottom, and as it transitioned up into the sky, it became lighter, I mean, uh, darker up here, okay? So what we have is a transitioning lighting scheme going from light down here to dark up there. You can't see the light behind here too well because the trees are covering it at this point in time, but if you have something going from light to dark, up here, I wanted the trees to transition from dark to light, so that dark stands out against light, and light stands out against dark. That makes sense. So this is what you know we kind of ended up with. You know, see it's darker down here, then it transitions up here, but then it, that looked kind of weird. So I did stamp this entire foreground down here using dark imagery. So it's kind of sandwiched. You know these background trees are sandwiched in between the dark um, foreground and the uh, the background um, kind of a lighting scheme or whatnot. So anyways, I was pleasantly surprised in how that turned out. There were other things that kind of I figured out um, as soon as it dried, or kind of as I was sitting there too, but this is a really dark black versifying right here in the foreground, and the white pigment ink from the background you really started to bleed through these foreground trees that are done in black. So I didn't mind it too much. I thought it, you know, I would have preferred it in theory to be nice and dark without that bleed through happening. So you can kind of see that bleed through happening right in here and right in here. See that right there? This is just, these foreground trees are all just solid black, but you can see where that bleed through is happening. So they kind of become a little bit more translucent. But I thought that didn't look too bad because it kind of all, I don't know, it kind of harmonizes with the spirit of the piece. It seems a little bit more maybe kind of watercolor -y ish. Yeah, not in terms of the overall um, technique, but just in terms of uh, how um, kind of one thing might bleed into the other or bleed through. Um, something else that's been applied on top of it, so, yeah, uh, I don't know, it's one of those things, I mean, it happens, so there's nothing I can do about it anyway, but, um, I thought it looked okay as is, yeah, okay, this one's another block of reason and faith right here, and I'm sure this last one is another repeat, Yeah, this one is this one right here. Okay, so anyways, what do we have here? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine new. Uh, eight new and one kind of a repeat uh, printing of an idea card. Oh, wait, this one is this one right here. Sorry. What do we have here then? Lose track of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So seven seven new ones and one repeat right here getting mailed out in your orders so anyways uh fun stuff as far as color accuracy i'm really happy with this batch sometimes they come out a little bit darker um so i think i i don't know i might have compensated for that a little bit in terms of my exposure when i was formatting these but otherwise, I'm pretty pleased at um, how they look in the color reproduction of these. 
you always want them for, you know to be as accurate as possible and uh, like I said I think meh, there was a couple of these that were um, where the originals are done on matte paper instead of glossy and it would be it would make sense in the future to have um, those ones that are matte like this one um, printed up on you know matte cardstock as well but um, but otherwise as far as the color saturations and whatnot there like I said they're pretty accurate and as far as the uh, the uh, the color transitions and intensity so all right anyways hope you enjoyed the unboxing thanks for watching if you have any questions, drop us a note in the comment section. Hope you like, share, and subscribe.